passed away. We wanted men. Morning, Jason. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. This weather, man, it's really messing with me. We, were, we I guess, scheduled to record at 9, and then I woke up at like 8.45, and with this overcast like that, man, you just sleep in, want to sleep in forever. Yeah, I slept in till 7.30, and that was amazing. Yes. So... But, it feels like it's been forever since we recorded, even though it's been, you know, we were, did two episodes last week at ICCCC. But. Yeah. I mean, it's been three weeks since we've sat down and did like our normal routine. So it feels good to be back in it and to have some normalcy. Yeah. So how's uh, how's your week been since I see? This week has been pretty quiet. It's kind of recovery because um, <clears throat> three weeks ago, my, my grandfather passed away. So it's been emotionally physically mentally exhausting because we had to drive up to um south bend indiana for the service and on my way i stopped in cincinnati and met some of my one of my friends up there Um, gosh who would you have met in cincinnati you (laughs) (laughs) and then after yeah no um yeah keep going man no you go no, that was a cool moment, man. It, it was cool sharing that with you, you know, sharing that with another Star Wars nerd that would appreciate it as much yeah. as I did. Yeah, it was bigger than I thought it was going to be. I, I guess the photos <laughs> set myself up for that one. <laughs> and now I'm conscientious of everything I say. Like, if I say that, if it's four stories tall, yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, the, the mural is like four stories tall and then right over its shoulders the kroger building where everything happened everything went down so it's just kind of cool to be like that's where it happened i don't know what are your thoughts of that mural that was it was awesome i didn't realize that the kroger building was like right there i knew it was going to be right there because i looked it up and mapped it but i didn't realize that you know at a certain angle you can get both in the picture yeah Uh, it was it was cool i kind of I was a little nervous because um, we were running a little late and we'd actually when we were in the middle of making a purchase and I looked at the clock and I kept, you know, we'd planned like a half an hour at this one store. But Mandy had just was falling in love with it. And everywhere she turned, she kept finding all this crap. So I'm like, all right, we, we got to stop and, and be back. So we told the lady, hey, we're going to go meet somebody in Cincinnati and we'll be back. So I was a little anxious because we were, I thought we were running late. But and then there was a main road that was blocked. Uh, so we, you know, and when you see the Kroger building for the first time, it, it was kind of a little emotional cause I came a different way than you guys did. And you, you saw it and you're just like, that's it. <laughs> um, yep. and, um, yeah, then seeing the mural and it, it was just, a, it was an awesome experience and, and having you guys there, it, it made it even better, you know, cause yeah. you're able to, Mandy understood what it was, but then having another Star Wars nerd there that understands what you're seeing just makes it that much better. Absolutely. Like everything you said. Yeah. Because even my daughter who doesn't like Star Wars was looking at C-3PO in that mural and she's just like the reflection, the chrome effect on that is amazing. That dude did an amazing job on that yeah. thing. Um, because yeah, you can look at C-3PO, you can look at R2-D2's head and, and you, um, the reflection it, it catches other pieces of the mural and yeah that was an it's an amazing job and you don't have to be a star wars um fan to appreciate that mural so it's it's for everyone if you're in cincinnati stop by it's right down the street from the kroger building check it out it's amazing yeah in cincinnati it's 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 just a cool town um i guess we could talk about my trip because uh yeah we'll do we'll do that now because um where else are we going to go? But anyway, yeah, yeah we went up, uh, we um, had a, pl- a trip planned to Florida. And then basically the where we were going to stay, we we're going to stay with my wife's aunt and she had kitchen stuff, uh, kitchen remodel going. So we had, uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't stay here. 
and then I looked at my wife and I'm like, if we're going to pay for a hotel room, let's just go somewhere where we've never been. And so we decided to go to Cincinnati. She kind of was messing with me a little bit and was like, why, why would we want to go to Cincinnati? And then a week later or a couple of days later, we're, we're planning the trip. Um, we actually, we stayed uh, in the town over because it's, it's really weird because I get when you get up into that part of the country, you don't realize or you don't realize that three states are right next to each other. You can go in between them very easily. Um, so we actually stayed in Covington, Kentucky, which was a really cool town. Um, they had, uh, you know, a really cool little Main Street area down like five minutes from where we stayed. So we ended up eating dinner pretty much every night there. Uh, there was a few breweries, so we had a bunch of beer, um, you know, so it was just cool. Uh, the town's cool because it's, it's still, I guess, holding on to their heritage because here in Atlanta, we don't really have 100-year-old buildings, um, and up there they do. Everything's old, and it's just beautiful, uh, a beautiful town. Uh, what what you think of the set, you know, skyline and everything? It was cool. I was there for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there for a weekend like you. Yeah, it was cool because you had messaged me and was just sort of like it was. I guess it was sort of like an afterthought that hey, I'm going to be in Cincinnati on Friday, and then I'm like, oh crap, we got to make this happen. Um, so you had on Friday, you had kind of kept kept me up to date, and I talked to my wife, and she's like, oh yeah, we we're definitely going to make this happen. So we kind of purposely uh, not rearranged our trip, but uh, made it to where the first time I saw the mural was was with you, so that it would it would still hold everything, you know, still hold the the freshness to it. Yep. And um, that was cool. The Cincinnati, um, it's just, it's a cool town. It's, it, it's got, it, you know, the history of, of uh, Kenner that's in that town. And you talk to the people that, that have been there forever. And you talk to all these people in the toy shops. And they're like, you, you don't realize how overwhelmed we are with Star Wars here. Uh, you know, they were telling me stories about how when they grew up in, um, in, in middle school and stuff, when Santa Claus came up, Kenner sponsored Santa Claus. So they'd have a bag or box full of Kenner toys, you know, Star Wars toys or whatever. And that's what they get from Santa Claus. Um, so they, they've been growing. They, they're so, I guess, desensitized is the right word to use for this when it comes to Star Wars that they're just like, yeah, it's another Star Wars piece. Um, but it's just, it, it's just odd to think that way. Yeah, they have the Hall of Justice up there too. Yeah, we did. We go. Did you get to see that from the from the freeway? Briefly, because I was driving. I was just glanced over my shoulder, saw it, and then I went back to the road. Yeah, we <laughs> gotta actually, be safe first. Yeah, exactly. That's happened to me with the arch in St. Louis. As I told my wife, I said, "I want to see the arch," and we just kind of we were driving through St. Louis, and then there's the arch, and I'm trying to pay attention to it, and it's the same issue. She's like, "Pay attention to the road." I'm like, "But it's the freaking arch, and I want to see it." Um, we yeah, had the Hall of Justice. We went there and uh, they actually had uh, Miss Marvel, I guess, is the, the character. She was doing a photo shoot, a cosplayer, because it was after it had closed. And apparently uh, that place has got a very cool art deco. I guess it's a museum. Um, it's a very cool art deco feel and there's a bunch of cool stuff inside of it. And we just never made the time to go back and, and actually see the inside of it just because we were busy running around looking at toy shops. But uh, that was kind of cool. And then like as soon as I post pictures of it in the chat, and Ryan's like, "You got to go to Kenner Street," and I'm like, "Dude, no! Where where the hell's Kenner Street?" And he's sending me maps and stuff, and I realize it's basically just make the block, and you're you're on Kenner Street. Uh, so that was kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, How was the uh, flea market? The flea market was cool. We went to, um, gosh, what flea market? We went to two different flea markets. I'm trying to remember which one we went to first. But I think that it's uh, Treasure Isles and then um, Trader's World. They're right next, basically across the street from each other, or really close to each other. And uh, we went to one because we were talking to, with a guy over at House of Plastic. And he was like, if you get there, you got to get there at like six in the morning because that's when people set up. And that's when the deals happen and blah, blah, blah. So my wife was like, great. I guess we're waking up at five and heading up there. So that's what we did. But she ended up sleeping half the way. <laughs> Uh, up there and we got there at six and there was one person set up and he had no toys oh. so she slept in the car for an hour or I just kind of walked around and watched people set up and about seven o'clock it, it it started booming and um we we got some stuff but I didn't you know it wasn't what I was expecting I was expecting there to be like some crazy stuff I knew it wasn't gonna be um 
you know, I knew I wasn't going to find, you know, a vinyl Cape Jawa or D DT Luke or anything in there, but I thought I'd at least see some Star Wars toys there and nobody had any. The only thing I found was like this um, 2000, uh, it was like a slave one that hooked up to a lightsaber that you pulled back and it launched and the guy was wanting like four bucks for it. So, and as I'm talking to him about it, he goes, here's a Taco Bell toy I'm going to throw in. I said, for $4, I, okay, I'm going to buy it. You got me. But my wife had been looking for some um, um, nativity scene stuff. And there was a bunch of, they had a couple of guys with some Christmas stuff up there. So she did pretty good and she was happy uh, with the whole thing. But, and, and then we went to, there was a toy show, um, Average Joe toy show that we went to uh, about a half an hour down the road. And it was cool, but it was like 75% pops. And they had a few Star Wars stuff. And I think I forgot where I was because I really should have been looking through the loose stuff. And there wasn't a whole lot of vintage, uh, but it, it, it was a good, you know, it was a decent toy show. It was a good way to kill an hour. And it was like four bucks to get in. So you, you can't argue with that. Um, and then we went to the other tr uh, flea market that's right next to the casino. Um, I think it was maybe Treasure Isle. It's got a bunch of animals sitting out front and that was just huge um and there was a bunch of toy shops in there but it was all modern stuff it was either it was a really either really junky or it was modern um there was sort of no in between there was like one store that had a few vintage items uh but it was still it was th that saturday was a cool way to just kind of end our trip um you know looking at everything and then we ended up going um I guess the toy shops, let me just start off with like the toy shops we found. Yeah. Um, Cause we went, uh, we went to toy department, which was probably one of the cleaner stores, quote unquote. Um, it was just neat. Uh, they was very well organized. They had all the, all the high end stuff where it was kind of like behind cabinets. Um, and uh, they had the best selection of prototypes. They had one cabinet just full of prototypes. And uh, they actually had a couple of Bill and Ted prototypes that I was drooling over because they had the Napoleon, that unproduced Napoleon that was like $1,800. And I was just, I was like, oh my God, when I saw it, because um, it's sort of stuff of legend. And then they had the, one of the cars, they made a, like a rock and roll car truck thing with a stage on the back of it. And I, I tried making a deal on that, but it just, it, we were a little too far apart. And my wife was kind of like, I see next weekend, you need money for that. So we didn't make, I didn't make the deal. And she was like, well, it's not complete. It's missing parts. And I'm like, babe it's it's a prototype um the napoleon match you're drawing no it didn't it um actually i got an interesting story about that because it does not match the drawing it's just it looks more like him with like the bathing suit on when he oh, went okay. swimming uh but the drawing i have when um i'll jump ahead a minute when we were at ic going through Ken, kim simmons stuff i found a hard copy a picture of a hard copy of that napoleon which he he said was for uh beetle's use and it was either you or jerry that said that on the napoleon hat there's a crest that looks like beetle juice yeah it's a, a metal so it kind of threw me off a little bit but talking to, to kim and then they had uh tom um he called himself tc i forgot what his last name was clark, tom clark tom clark he was um head of the head of um kenner for a minute and I talked to him and he kind of, I don't know if he didn't, wasn't involved with the Bill and Ted stuff. And the, the best thing we can come up with is maybe they were trying to develop that Napoleon for Bill and Ted. And then they went, they shelved it and then pulled it back out for um, Beetlejuice. But um, it's just a cool, cool vibe to, to have, you know, concept drawings of a picture and then have a picture of the hard copy of, of, of right. uh, um so it was, it was kind of a cool moment, kind of cool yeah. to bring everything together. Now, I don't know if, you know, I'm not a Beetlejuice guy, but it'd be cool to have the hard copy uh, just to kind of complete that set. But I know I'll never find it. Um, but yeah, toy department was amazing. Uh, we went to, there's another one called Road to the Past uh, Collectibles, which I really dug this one because um, it was just a little bitty, probably like 200 square foot room, just packed full of um toys and collectibles and it actually had a couple of plush my wife collects the plush ewoks it had like three prototype plush ewoks that my wife was just like that was her oh my god moment i had the oh my god moment at the napoleon and the, the car from toy department her oh my god moment was when she saw those plush ewoks uh, 
and I actually tried to get her to go back and make a deal on them. And she just, she's like, well, when we come back, if it's still there, I'll make a deal and see what happens. And it's a lot of money. And I, blah, you know, I, I shouldn't, I'm not there in my collection. I'm like, you're not, but you are, you know, in your mind, you don't think you are, but in reality, that's sort of like the next step because her mind, uh, as far as her collection goes, is she's like, I'm a flea market girl. I like stuff from flea markets. I like it dirty. I like it junky. Uh, you know, she likes paying cheap for her stuff. Yeah. And, but, you know, her, and I can't argue with that. That's what she likes doing. Um, but the dude had three uh, plush Ewoks. He had two of the little ones. And then he had one of the bigger, like Princess Nisa uh, with a handmade uh, hood that, you know, they would look great. He had started off at like a thousand dollars a piece for him. And then he was down to like 800 within, you know, real quick. So I was like, I told my wife, I said, let's go get some cash out and just throw it on the counter and see what he says. And then you could walk away with your hand held high, head held, you know, head held high. Yeah. And she just, she wouldn't do it. She literally yelled at me on Saturday. I'm like, do you want to go try to make a deal on that, on that Ewok? She's like, if you want to, you can. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to shut up about it, but it's going to probably be the only time you're going to be able to get a hard copy of a vintage item. So you just need to realize what you're passing up. And yeah. she was, she was cool with it. So I just had to let it go. Um, one of the things we went to that's over near toy department was the Ohio antique mall. That was, I walked in there and that was the biggest antique mall I've ever seen in my life. Um, it was the size of a, like a large flea market. Uh, and it, we probably spent two hours there and we didn't see it all. We, we had to just walk away because it was just so much stuff. Uh, we weren't prepared. My wife had flip-flops on. She wasn't prepared to walk for that long. And we were just, we had just driven up there that morning and it was like, we had to quit because it was just that big of a flea market. Uh, and they had some cool stuff because um, I've learned in flea markets, if they have like counter the uh, cases, you know, where people can buy shelves instead of buying a full unit, uh, a, a booth, those you can find some cool stuff in there. And they had some cool stuff in there, nothing incredible. Uh, but I did find like a, a Lego uh, Mandalorian, a little pack, uh, the Mandalorian uh, ship for like 10 bucks. So that was, that was a cool find for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went home and relaxed. And then the next day, uh, Friday was it? Yeah. No, we went up on Wednesday. So this was Thursday. We went, we found uh, this place called O'Smiley's, which this kind of surprised me because nobody had recommended O'Smiley's because it says dolls and toys. So I guess people are figuring it's mostly a doll shop, but it was another one of those shops that just everywhere you look, there's something else and it's stacked on top of each other. Uh, you know, it's basically organized chaos. And, um, you know, the, the lady, the lady that ran the store was great. She had talked about, we talked about everything and we talked about us being from Atlanta and talked to my wife loves ET. So she found some ET stuff there. Uh, she actually found a, a men on card Ewok, um, that was like 60 bucks and I'm not paying attention to it. Uh, you know, all I see is that it's a men on card Ewok for 60 bucks. And when we get home, She's looking at it again and is like, hey, there's a bunch of foreign writing on this. And I was like, oh, crap. Uh, and then she turns it over and it's a palatoy. So that was kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. So now she has a foreign carded Ewok and I don't even have a forward, you know, foreign carded <laughs> Ewok. She she just, got, it's like she's got dumb luck. You. Yeah, she's got dumb luck when it comes to this kind of stuff. Well, tell her what you're looking for and she'll find it for you. She does, man. It's amazing, dude. She will find it. we we make a good team because I'll look, I scan stuff where she gets in and digs, and she'll always find stuff for me. Uh and then we went to House of Plastic that day too. Um it was cool. The guy there was cool. He was actually the guy that talked to us about going into flea markets. And he uh actually let me get back to to O Smiley's. We were talking to her, and this is just one of the stories that she was, you know, hearing stories about. Kenner finds and, and stuff there. She was telling me it's a story about how this guy walks in with a, um, a box stretched Armstrong and he was like, I want $50 for it. And she was like, um, well, dude, this thing's worth more than 50 bucks. And he goes, dude, I just want drinking money. So give me $50. And next thing, sorry, my wife is in the background. Hey, there's my dog. Um, so I was trying to figure out, but anyway, She's like, I just want, he was like, I just want drinking money. She's like, well, I'm going to give you more than $50 for this thing. And 
she was like, well, wait a minute, where, where'd you get this? And he goes right down the street, somebody's selling all his toys for like five bucks. And she looks around and says, everybody get out of my store. So she shuts the store down and like runs down to this uh, yard sale. So, and it was, you know, and she's like, the only time that happens is when it's an ex-Kinner employee and they've got so much stuff, people have no clue what to do with it. Um, yeah. So it was, I didn't find any dumpsters, dude. Every time we were through, cause you'll, you'll go through all these neighborhoods and stuff. It's just, it's a really, you know, it's not like Atlanta where it's, it's all freeways and, and stuff. So you're driving through a lot of neighborhoods and every time we're driving through a neighborhood, I'm just hoping to find a dumpster with like a something Star Wars sitting on top of it so I can go <laughs> dumpster diving, but it just did not happen. No. Yeah. Um, That's like a once in a generation kind of moment yeah it just it was it would have been cool i've had that kind of happen in atlanta um there's a like i found like a piece of art on like a wood cutout um sitting on somebody's dumpster so i went and grabbed it but you know it turned out to be like a two three hundred dollar piece of art that they just oh. throw it away but wow. yeah <laughs> um so Oh, geez. There's a, there was a lot going on up there. Uh, where else did we go? Oh, the other, another story went that that's a newer store. It's only been around for about a year. It's called Earth to Kentucky. It's on the Kentucky side of the river. And it has a lot of um, mismatches, a lot of bootlegs and stuff. It's yeah. like an odd store. Um, and they had a whole bunch of ET stuff. So my wife was just like, give me all the ET stuff. And uh so that that she scored a bunch of good ET stuff there. She had a uh, like this piece of folk art that was ET, and the guy had taken that idea and started making other wood carvings of of uh, figure of uh, characters. So he had like a Darth Maul, and I'm like, dude, if you had a Boba Fett, I'd be I'd be picking that up. And she goes, my husband may hooked up with this one guy that went to San Diego Comic Con, and he did like. 20 or 30 fets for the guy as a limited edition so i doubt he's gonna so but at that time when he was done with those he was so tired of fet that he's probably never gonna do another one so i was like oh well yeah. uh but uh <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't imagine i guess you would after doing like 30 fets you get tired of doing that character but you know they, they were cool wood carvings yeah. uh, you know painted up real nice and i think he was only wanting like 75 bucks a piece for him and you know, in my mind, in Atlanta, it'd probably be 150. So they were just, they were cool, um, cool things. Mm. Yeah. Um, there was also, there's another shop called Route 68 that we didn't get to because it was like 30 more minutes out, which would have put us an hour back to the, uh, to the room. So we didn't go um, because we wanted to go to the flea market and maybe we should have gone. But anyway, uh, basically the, the gist of it or what, I, what people are telling me about it is that it's a uh, basically one guy, he has his shop. And then on the other side of the shop, he put, he basically opened it up as a flea market for toy sellers. So there's people that buy shelves or whatever. Uh, so it's just like maybe 10 flea, ten sellers in this one room, uh, you know, like a toy flea market. And uh, I wish we would have gone up there, but yeah, it was cool. Um, and then Saturday night or Friday night, we went up, uh, Mike and Vicky, uh, a couple of collectors up there. Um, we got to go see their collection and they're big Ewok collectors. So my wife had fun with that. Uh, and their, their collection was just incredible. But that's awesome. yeah. That's awesome. You were able to connect with collectors. Yeah, it was fun. And, and what's cool with IC is I made some connections with people that are up there. So next time we go, I can make a couple of phone calls and, and, uh, <laughs> hopefully have some connections because it's just weird for me where you're like hey i'm going to cincinnati anybody want to invite me to their house and yeah it's kind of awkward yeah but narayan's just like go see these people so he he hooked me up <laughs> with a uh, mike and vicky which is cool yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah so i got my shot on the way to south bend i got my second pfizer shot the day before we left and i was told to avoid side effects from the shot to drink tons of water. So I was just downing water Thursday and then Friday on the trip up and had to stop like at, at five or six different Walmarts along the way just to relieve myself. But sure you did. I, <laughs> well, yes. it's good to stop. At, it's good to stop at Walmart. Cause like the kids wanted Funyuns. So you're able to just buy Funyuns. And, <laughs> um, the vintage collection grief cargo was peg warming 
all the shelves from Atlanta to Indiana. So if you're curious what's peg warming out there, it's Grief Karga. I did see a couple Princess Leia's and a couple Zuttons. I haven't seen the child on a peg in any of the stores yet. I haven't seen. I saw one Boba Fett and he's with me. Um, <laughs> but the, the one thing that is seemingly like it's always in stock are those 12 inch figures. And I don't understand why Hasbro makes them if they're not selling other than making sure that no one else gets the 12 inch license from, from Disney. Are you, talk- are, just- are, you, are you talking, I'm sorry. Are you talking about those cheap 12 inch figures? Yeah. The shampoo bottles, I guess some people call them, but they're 12 inch tall figures. They're in a very thin, narrow box. They've got f- maybe five points of articulation. They're very cheap. They're about 10 bucks, but I think, Hasbro just has that license to hold to hold it up and make sure no one else in the United States gets it. I found Bo Katan at a Target, and I also found the latest wave of the Archives Black Series, but I only picked up the Shore Trooper and Sand Trooper. So I found those along the way, but that was it. And and I was exhausted from that trip. And then I had like three days to recover, and then it was that Friday before the Friday of ICCCC, I was up for like 19, 20 hours from five in the morning till midnight. So I was exhausted for ICCC. Yeah. You, 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 I could tell man. Cause I was on fumes. Yeah. I think I sat out more, more than I intended to, but that's all right. That's all yeah. Good, it's, uh, yeah. Well, it, it's the situation. Yeah. Um, I have some news. I have three weeks of news. Yeah, dude. Let's run some news and then we'll talk IC. Cause... All right. So starting off with some Disney news, Josh DeMauro, who is the president of Disney Parks, I believe, he was giving a press um, presentation for just some press. And, and there was a part where they, they were strictly not allowed to record or take photos or anything like that. He pulled out a lightsaber and ignited it, and he turned to the camera and he said, it's real. So a lot of people are thinking it's this, it's a lightsaber hilt. Inside, if you can imagine, there's two, like a a retractable tape measure. So there's a motor that pushes the tape measure out, and there's a motor that pushes the tape measure in. It's two-sided. It's, there's two, there's two sections of the tape measure measure if you if you will and they kind of connect to make a tube in the middle of that tube is a string of led lights so as you hit that button the motor pushes that that tape out and then when you hit the button again the, the motor pulls the tape back in that's all we know right now there's a patent out there if you're really interested to see what disney's thinking but it appears that there's some sort of actual real ignitable lightsaber that's coming and that disney's working on it I, I want I'm really curious about these because it does sound like you said like it's going to be some kind of tape so is that something they can quote unquote fight with or you know are people two people going to get these and try to battle with it and then they're going yeah. to ruin their lightsabers or is it yeah. just is it just for show or can you actually have fun with it can you buy one or is this strictly for the uh, galactic star cruiser you put the AR gla- glasses on and you see the blasters coming out of the like uh, some sort of training ball that's shooting lasers out at you and you're using the lightsaber to block that stuff. So there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Cause I actually, some of the people that saw it, uh, he had said that it looked like it might've been enhanced, but you can't really tell. Continuing with lightsaber news. They've hiked the prices up 20 bucks at galaxy's edge. So they're starting at 219, and they, they kind of say starting at 219. So I don't know if there's going to be add-ons or what, or, but They've gone from one ninety nine to two nineteen now. The cost of those lightsabers at Savvy's. Disney's always going to raise prices, and still at two twenty. I mean, two hundred was a little steep. Well, actually, two hundred wasn't that bad. Two twenty, it's only twenty dollars. I'd still do it. Um, I mean, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, it's not surprising to me. Like when they said that the the droids from Droid Depot were going to be ninety nine dollars, I'm like, well, kids, get in there and make your droids before they start jacking that price up because that seems a little low. I can see this hitting like the one forty nine mark soon. Yeah, those droids are cool. And and I am curious now that you said that there was going to be quote unquote add-ons, if there if there is going to be add-ons, 
because, um, you know, at the Droid Depot, you can spend another 50 bucks on your Droid and not even think twice about it because you can spend $50 on a, on a bag and then it's $20 for, or $15 for a personality chip. And then you've got stickers and then they got other add-ons and, you know, you could put weapons on your Droid. So you could spend 200 bucks on a Droid real fast. So um, if they are going to do add-ons on lightsabers, it, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see what they're going to do with them. And at one point they were offering like right when Disney World first opened up after closing down for the pandemic, they were offering people the option to buy extra pieces for their lightsaber so you can interchange that stuff. Yeah, I don't know it, if they're still doing that. I don't know if they are or aren't. I hadn't seen any reports. Uh, Star, Star, Tours. Star Wars detours might be coming to Disney Plus in a couple weeks. Do you know what that is? I've, I've seen there's like the there's little clips skits. online. Yeah. Did I just lose you? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now I have no faith in technology in this episode. Yeah, it's it's you are your mic is kind of acted up a little bit, but oh, we'll boy. just roll with it because it does. There's like a delay or something to, to kicks on. There's like a five second delay. You start talking, and I can hear you, and then all of a sudden you're there. All right. Well, I'll just keep rolling here. There's a rumor that Mandalorian, Grief Karga, Migs Mayfield, and Cobb will be back for the Book of Boba Fett, but that's just a rumor. I haven't seen it corroborated anywhere so who knows if that's actually going to happen but i kind of wish that they wouldn't bring these characters back for book book of boba i was hoping they would maybe incorporate some of the other bounty hunters and some of the underworld from the original trilogy i don't i don't want to see these shows depending on what came before to make what the future is if that makes sense like i don't want book of boba to rely on mandalorian and i don't want ahsoka to rely on book of boba and mandalorian and i don't want you know what i mean yeah, I think they're going to all tie in together, but I truthfully, I think um, they're going to, I still think Ahsoka is going to go on their way. And I think, I think Mandalorian's going a total different way. So they've, they've set up all these really cool characters in Mandalorian. So I think they're going to have to carry them. The only logical place for them to stay is, is the book of Boba Fett because that's going to take place on the technically, you know, you think it would take place on Tatooine, which is where Cobb is. So I think that's those characters. It only makes sense, logical sense for those guys to stay in, in Book of Boba. We'll see what happens. It's just a rumor. It could be not true at all. But well, you there, know how Star Wars is with rumors. Yeah. There was a miscarded Boba Fett on a Zutton card back that recently sold on Deal or No Deal for 750 bucks. <laughs> and I've seen so I, I've seen more of those than I thought would ever exist like i've probably seen like five or six of those in different areas on the internet whether that's different collecting groups or what but the the market is so crazy right now i i, I just i regret saying anything and i'm hesitant to say like what the future of collecting might be because when when a card back like that selling for a modern is selling for 750 like fresh off the shelf it's just kind of crazy yeah I, I it took me aback that that thing sold that fast or sold for that much. But then, like you were saying, as soon as it sold, everybody's like, "Hey, I've got this card." So, a lot of people were showing up. So yeah. I, I'd, I'd hate to be that person that uh, you know bought that thing for seven hundred dollars and just to realize there's like ten or fifteen of them out there. Right. But, right. It's not as unique. But still, I mean, having ten or fifteen, you know, having one of fifteen, still pretty awesome. Right. Because it's still rare. Yeah. I think there's more rocket firing Boba Fett's out there than that. Yeah. There's like 20. But card collecting is insane right now, so much so that there's a prominent card grading company that's not accepting any new submissions. Wow. And that's including like the Star Wars cards and, and Garbage Pail Kids. And it's just on fire right now. They can't handle the influx because of, you know, COVID and the pandemic. People, again, have extra money to spend and they're spending it on their childhood cards and the company can't even keep up with the grading and stuff that's pretty freaking insane but that's where we are i mean yeah it, it is dude it, it um it, the prices right now are crazy i mean we've talked about it before um and and we, we've kind of seen it at ic where people are asking insane i mean it, it seems like the the common stuff is holding the prices are holding pretty good but then when you get to the, the high-end stuff it's name your price and people are like, I'll pay it. Yep. Uh, you know, they, there was a, a vinyl 
Cape Jawa carded 12 back that sold for $20,000 at IC. And apparently the person who bought it showed up, bought it, then just left. That he showed up specifically to buy that piece and was gone as soon as he bought it. You have documented some of the prices at ICCC. So I'll get into that when we get there. But yeah, that $20,000 final Cape Jawa graded was just insane. I didn't even get to see it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty, I saw it, but I didn't, it was like, okay, that's cool. And I, I, I need to start appreciating when I see stuff like that more. Tom Brady was at Walt Disney World and Galaxy's Edge. Do you think he prefers blue milk or green milk or do you not care? I saw that he liked blue milk, but yep. I really don't care i just want to it just <laughs> sucks when somebody like that is like okay we'll open the park early for you and um you know it's all photoshop it's all photo opportunities all photo ops, and yeah photo yeah. ops and you're you know oh here stand in front of take 20 minutes and stand in front of these uh, all the de- the stormtroopers so you could take a picture with your lightsaber that we just gave you and <laughs> you wish you were tom brady is what you're saying yes here you could ride, ride this rise. Take as much time as you want in Rise of the Resistance and in the Millennium Falcon and touch everything and have fun. And you, yeah, I wish I was Tom Brady. Yeah. I wish I could get the VIP treatment like that at Disney. Um, let's see the retro collection starting to hit the uh, the store shelves. That's the new version with the Mandalorian and Grief Karga and and Cara Dune and the Child. And I thought the interesting thing is <laughs> that the retro version of Grogu, the child, is actually bigger than the six inch version, the black really? series version. Yeah, he's just slightly taller than, which is weird. But I think if you know you were using your hands to develop a tool, a, a tooling of Grogu back in the 70s, it would be slightly off scale. Mm-hmm. So I think it's on brand for the retro collection, but it does look a little weird that he's bigger than the black series version. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> um, we were driving up, like I was saying, to that the the service, and um, this weather stripping on my windshield started to flap in the wind. We were out in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, and I'm trying to listen to this new Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest that was about to start. So it was close to two o'clock in the afternoon, and the weather stripping starts to peeling off, and and we're driving, and I just hear. <laughs> Cause it's just flapping in the wind. So I had to roll down my window and kind of hold it. And I was like, where's the closest Walmart? And here I am out in the middle of nowhere and Walmart's 10 minutes away. So I get to Walmart and I'm like, I quickly run in cause it's almost two o'clock and I grab some duct tape and I use some duct tape just to hold the weather stripping in my mother-in-law who's from the South. And she's, she was like, well, welcome to the South. You're officially Southerner. Part of your car is being held together with duct tape. <laughs> So I got to get that fixed. But as I was fixing it, I was listening to this Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. And for the vintage collection, there, there's a new heavy battle battle droid um, gaming grate. So the gaming grate line that used to be part of the six-inch black series is coming to the vintage collection now. There's the Shadow Storm Trooper. There's the Shock Scout Trooper. Those last two are from Jedi Fallen Order. Heavy battle droid was from... Uh, Oh, wait, no, Shadow Battlefront 2. Heavy Battle Droid is from Battlefront 2. The Shadow Stormtrooper might be from Battlefront 2. The Shock Trooper and the Purge Trooper were both from Jedi Fallen Order. If I remember that right, I could be wrong. There's also being released. Available. What? <laughs> There's too many stuff going on in video games. Yeah. Also being released is the Endor Han, the Royal Guard, the Akbar, and the Hoth Luke. And I recent I was at Walmart yesterday, and they had all of them except the Royal Guard, which is the one that I need. <laughs> Somebody had picked off all of the uh, Emperor Guards, so army I need to pick building, up- baby. What's that? Army building, baby. Yeah, I guess so. You need two of them to complete the set because two appear in the uh, Return of the Jedi. But that was one of the ones that, during the initial run of the Vintage Collection, was just dumped onto Amazon. And they're selling for close to a hundred bucks. And I just never, you know, I almost had it at one point in an auction. I was going to bid 80 bucks for it, but I never got it. So um, I'm glad it's being re-released so I can actually grab one now for 12 bucks. And I'm not kicking myself for buying it for 80 bucks. Yeah. But most of like 
most of everything I just said for the vintage collections retooled from something else, which is a, a struggle with the vintage collection. And it's got to be because Lucasfilm and Disney is just tightening the noose about costs and what they can make and how much they can make per year and stuff like that. So they're, I think the budget for Hasbro's budget for Star Wars is decreasing. So they're, they're being forced to get more creative with what they make which is part of the reason why there's a lot of re retooling and recreating new figures from older figures, especially with um, the vintage collection, because the Black Series, it's all new stuff. Right. There's Casca Reeves. Terry, Ara Singh. For, go, go on for a minute. I'll be right back. There's Ara Singh. There's Q90. Which is Zero, the droid from that one episode of The Mandalorian where they bust, oh, uh, I can't remember names right now, but it's another Twilight out from that Repu Re uh, Re Republic prison ship, whatever it is, tech from Bad Batch. And then rounding out the preparation to resell him again during the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi is General Lando Calrissian. I mean, every time they release some sort of Return of the Jedi figure from the Black Series line, I'm just like, of course, they're just getting it ready for, and you know, I say this over and over again, they're getting it ready for that 40th anniversary run where they're going to put it on a vintage card back. The question is, I think General Lando is releasing the Power of the Force card back. So are they going to do a Power of the Force card back? Or are they going to do a Return of the Jedi card back, which is not what he was offered on? Uh, Tech and Casca Reeves are the only two that are currently sold out as of today on Hasbro Pulse. Um, I'll also say that uh, I want a Mace pin from Left Coast Graphics, which I absolutely love. Mace is from the Battle of Endor and... A Caravan of Courage, um, and I had a blast recording that Caravan of Courage episode and watching the dumpster fire that is Caravan of Courage. I mean, it's it's fun and it's a great adventure, but it's more closer to Lord of the Rings, like we said, than Star Wars. But I had fun with it, and I won that pin off of an Instagram contest on uh, Left Coast Graphics Instagram page. So check them out. They have a lot of great stuff. They have a new emperor and emperor royal guard pin coming out and is dropping like within a couple days i think it's maybe next wednesday so if you're into pin collecting check that out it's coming yeah left left coast is a cool company i, I like all the stuff they do uh, i actually won a a contest they did uh for celebration last or last celebration i'd won a, a couple of magnets they i guess they did swag and they'd given a couple of pieces away so i'd won those and, uh it's like a, a grand moss talk and uh, with his slippers on. So it's kind of a throwback to the original Star Wars. So now that you're back. Yes. I want to, I want to ask a question. At, At what point is scalping considered scalping? Oh. And, and when is it not scalping anymore? Because I got a little frustrated with something Hasbro said during their fan fest. I think scalping, I guess, is more when you're like charging double for it or triple for it. That's what I consider scalping. I think okay. if you're going to help a buddy out or you're going to help somebody out and be like, all right, cool. I, I found this thing. I'm going to charge $5 more for it because I got to have my time, you know, Hey, uh, you know, help pay, help give me a little something. Uh, you pay for shipping, you pay for my time, my gas. Um, that's when I don't, I, I think that's helping out a buddy scalpings when you're charging like double or triple what the stuff is. So if, if that, vintage collection of soka is currently selling for six seven hundred dollars is that scalping it's years later I, yes and no uh just i think uh, if it was just off the shelf that's scalping it's been a few years since it's yeah. been out and there's it's it's hot so i don't consider that scalping because it's right. been years since it's been out so then it's value. That's the value of the figure. It's not scalping anymore because Hasbro was saying that the they have that new fan vote out for the um, there's five figures that are really expensive right now in the secondary market. And they were they were saying it was because of the result of scalpers. And I was just like, no, 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 guys, you didn't you didn't make enough. So don't blame the scalpers. Scalpers is like if something's hitting the shelf, these things have about two month shelf life. So. You know, six months down the road, it's all about value. It's not about scalping anymore. And I just got a little frustrated with Hasbro saying, well, it's all the scalpers that are making this Ahsoka figure $700. It's the demand. I, I, and you right. know what I, uh, and, and stuff working in my head. Here's what I consider a scalper. If you go to the store and you buy all the figures knowing you're going to flip them, that's a scalper. Yeah. 
you know, um, you know, okay, cool. I know Boba Fett's a popular figure, so I'm going to go buy them all. Or you walk into a store and there's a whole set of retro line and you're going to buy them all to flip them. That's a scalper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if it's been a few years, like I'm, I want the, the Lego ghost. And I was talking to a guy last night. He had, he showed me pictures and they've every P you know, his, his Lego, his ghost and the Falcon both have clearance stickers on them where he paid like $70 for the ghost. And I don't even remember what he had on the fat on the Phantom, but he's wanting $600 for those pieces. And it's just, it, that's what the going rate is. So, and my, I'm, it aggravates me because I'm like, dude, I, I'd give you like 300 bucks for him, but I'm not going to give you six. And it just, it sucks, but it's the supply and demand. And that's what people are, uh, are wanting, you know, that's, it's just, that's how the market is right now. I agree. Well, scalping is different than value, but for whatever reason, they were considering value scalping because they sold it for 12 bucks. So right. it should be worth 12 bucks. And it's like, no guys, prices increase over time. Yeah. That's, and, and, and that's sort of been Hasbro's thing when they see a figure that's getting to that mark. Cause that's why they kept releasing Bubba Fett. Because, uh, you know, it was going for insane amounts of money. And that's Hasbro's kind of uh, MO is they when they see a figure that like the Ahsoka that's going for $700, they'll re-release it to help the market or, you know, to affect the market. This whole wave of fan votes should be uh, one of those re-release waves. It's just a slap in the face to the fans that don't have it to be like, we need this one. This one is worth 300 bucks. I can't afford it. Well, you can vote for one of them. Yeah, it's just like no, guys, make them all. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so you know, go ahead. No, and, and, and it's also the the Funko issue where Funko will do that. They'll, they'll seem to hold on to a pop, or when it gets out of hand, they re-release it. So is it is it something that you want them to do, or do you want them to just you know leave it alone and and let the the market dictate the price? Well, I saw a lot of people saying don't vote for Ahsoka, and I'm like, I don't have that one, and I don't have. 750 bucks to fix it it's either i buy 750 dollar soka or my child doesn't get you know dental work or something like that <laughs> or my child gets dental work and i don't get a soka nobody wants that so it's just it's just frustrating like are they not wanting a soka because it's worth that much money and they want to say that they have that because the card back is going to be different yeah i mean I that figure is always going to be worth that in my opinion, or it may drop a couple of hundred dollars, but it's still going to be an expensive figure. And I think it's, um, I, where was I going with this? It, 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 you know, like you said, you can go buy it for $12. Um, and I totally lost my train of thought, but, uh, yeah, I know. it's just their way to battle, battle the scalpers and kind of affect the market. And, uh, I guess help people out, but that, that figure is never going to, that $700 figure is still going to be five, 600 bucks. Right. Cause they, they're changing all the card backs. There's a little four plus it's in the left-hand corner of most of these figures now, which wasn't always the case, but they're trying to make it so that if it's released in North America, it applies to European standards. And I think that was a European standard that they've kind of translated over to just the card back in general, because it's for ages four and up. And they got that stupid white piece of paper that they've been putting in everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of the recent ones. Yeah. Um, so, no, go ahead. No, yeah. Cause all the retro line stuff has it. Yeah. Um, so they also opened up for this Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest. They opened up on Instagram and Facebook questions from um, fans and just like ask us a question. We'll see what, what we what we answer and i'm just like you guys have made a mistake and i've pulled some of the best ones here and some of the more i think kind of what we've been saying for a while um but some of this is just trolling 101 so carrot nielsen asks can we get a cl stormtrooper clone trooper with heads featuring cantina creatures java palace creatures bib fortuna and lobot maybe having a little bit will help get complete creatures i think that's more of a statement on retooling because Hasbro retools a lot of things. So they're like, if you just make a figure with that head, then eventually you're going to make the rest of it when you re-release it. Jeremy Smith says, do you guys not like selling Star Wars products? Every Walmart and Target in a 50-mile radius of my house has been devoid of Black Series and vintage collections since before Christmas, so it's not a local issue to Atlanta. It's across the country. 
Um, David Lane says, respectfully, while distribution to retailers is a major issue for both collectors and casual fans, how is it that your very own web retail presence, Pulse, not only sells out of pre-orders super quickly, but is also perpetually sold out of a large percentage of what is listed when it could be a haven for those who can't find the items by traditional retail? Which I think is on point. I mean, like I just said, Costco Reeves and tech is sold out. It's like, this is your place. Like, if you see that it's sold out, can't you just order some more or something? Because some of these things are in advance. So, you know, you're pre-ordering six months in advance and you see that there's sold out already. Can't you just, I don't know. No, it makes sense what you're saying. Because, yeah, they are. They're, you know, okay. We're even if it's... A... Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. But even I know it's like a year to make these figures. But even if some people have to wait a little bit longer, you just make them. And isn't that sort of the point of pre-ordering so you know how much you sold? Yeah. But then I'm like, with these pre-orders, you know, they just announced this Emperor Royal Guard wave two weeks ago, and here it is on the shelf already. So I don't know how I don't know how they do pre-orders. Right. And then some stuff you're waiting two years for, and like you said, other stuff, it's on the shelf in a week. Yeah. When will uh, Zach... McKeon says, when will Hasbro realize the 3.5 scale demand is not being met for fans and that retail partners have had empty pegs for about nine years when it comes to articulated Star Wars figures? Do none of y'all see that the gap between when it comes to the Star Wars section and every single Walmart and Target? Yeah, of course they do. They're just, their hands are tied. Something happened when Hasbro re-signed that agreement to make figures from Disney and Lucasfilm because... Uh, I think this year we've only had like six out of 19 figures that are brand new. The rest are retooled Man. or redone. So I don't know. Disney must have done something with that 3.75 line because when you get six new figures from uh, Black Series and then you get, what is it, seven or eight new figures with the vintage collection, which are not new. They're retooled or recycled or something. Stephen Brent says this. Oh man, the floodgates. Why don't premium premium members actually get premium services? Is there a monkey throwing a dart to decide the next repack? Why isn't Pulse getting best exclusives? Why does Target and Walmart only get enough stock for collector? In a world of Ahsoka and Shea Vizsla, why do we get Anakin and Padme? Why do you ignore the VC when you clearly know that we love it? We literally want every character as a single, as a figure in every scale. Sincerely, a fan and shareholder. Damn. So. It it does feel like that, like they're just sort of, I get yeah, throwing a dartboard and it's like, all right, we, yeah, the Ahsoka's popular. We, we'll just make a different figure or make a different version of her or, yeah. or something. I, I I don't get it. Or maybe they're just that far behind that they don't they don't realize that Ahsoka is going to be popular. I, I don't know. They're, you know, you would think that they'd have their finger on the pulse of what's going to be released in the Mandalorian. I know. Okay, you know, Ahsoka's making an appearance and. Grand Admiral Thrawn is going to be announced. So that means Rebels is going to come back. And, you know, because it does feel like with the Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're releasing an episode on Friday. Monday morning, there's a new toy out that was featured in the episode. Yeah, it has to be a Lucasfilm Disney thing saying, no, you have to make this figure. Well, didn't they, uh, in that interview, the the I know he didn't go into it that detailed, but could it be that they're still using that ma- the, the mathematical equation? And that's why why we're getting the oddball stuff. It's possible, but I don't think so because I don't I don't know. Who knows? Like, yeah, it's just frustrating. And, and those that don't don't know what we're talking about, and I'm going to explain it really crappy because I don't even really remember it all that well. But uh, basically, they had they tiered all the figures, so you yep. had it like an A through D to a tier. And you had to release so many A figures before you got a D figure and you had to release so many B figures, you know, you know, so there was a, a matrix to where each tier had a, 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 a value to it. And you had to release so many from one tier before you got to release one from another tier. That's at the, the basic. Yeah. At the basic level, if you're six years old, you think Star Wars, you think Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia. So when you walk into this toy store, you want to see on the shelves Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, because that's who these figures are for. They're for six-year-olds. What? Just, yeah, supposedly, allegedly. So that's why Disney's just like, we need these figures on shelves. And that's why we're getting, yet again, an Endor Han, uh, a Hoth Luke, 
things like that. Akbar and the Royal Guard might be the B or C characters. So that's that's pretty much why we have to have those A figures in rotation. Even though we've have a billion Luke Skywalkers, we have a billion stormtroopers. It's just because they're recognizable. That's what kids want, and that's what they need to see on the shelves. Because if you go into a store and you see all these cantina creatures, cantina aliens in the background of of the the, the movie, they're they're on the store shelves. Kids are like, I don't want that. I want Luke Skywalker. And that makes total sense because thinking it, thinking about it from, you know, like my grandkids, that's what he wants. He wants Boba Fett. He wants Luke. He wants Darth Vader. That's those are the figures they want. They don't care about Ahsoka because I bought him an Ahsoka, and he's he doesn't care that that I gave him an Ahsoka. He wants the the Boba Fett toy. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Armour says, since it's the fiftieth of Lucasfilm, why no Indiana Jones? A black series indie would be cool, but please no mutt. Which I, I think that's probably right around the corner with the new Indiana Jones movie in production with Ghost, Ghostbuster six inch, GI Joe six inch, Star Wars six inch. You know, Indiana Jones is right behind that. Yeah, I think the only Indiana Jones I might want is that the one from Temple of Doom when he's on the bridge. He's got his arm ripped off, or the sleeve of his arms ripped off, and I love that version of Indiana Jones for some reason. Yeah, uh, that, that's sort of the iconic Indiana Jones look, though. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm not probably not going to collect all of them, but I can get one of them. Yeah. Um, and then on Instagram, real quick, just trying to wrap this up. The vintage collection demand. Uh, this is SWTBC. The vintage collection demand is not being met. Orders are not being filled for retailers and especially fan channels. How can we work with you to increase production run numbers? That's just. I guess we're beating a dead horse there. Because um, another one, Echo Live one two two two. Why? Are, why aren't you meeting product demand? So many figures are selling out in minutes and never appearing in stores. We want to buy your products, but we can't. And when I start to see this over and over and over again, Hasbro is not deaf. They're hearing it. But it has to be Disney telling Hasbro, no, you have to do this. Because Hasbro is a company that wants to make money. And when you got people saying, we want this, we want this, we want this, and they're not doing it, it has to be that Disney's saying, we need you to do this, this, and this. You know, if I have a hundred dollars to spend, Disney's not going to make two hundred dollars a product of Star Wars and Frozen and, and pro- whatever intellectual property that they're trying to ha- uh, sell us. I'm going to say hawk, <laughs> to sell us. They're going to make. They're going to scale everything down so that they make sure that they get a hundred bucks and they're not losing out on any money from ma- overproducing stock. So they're controlling how much Star Wars gets released, how much Frozen's getting released, how much Soul's getting released. And so I think that's just part of the effect because when you look at Revenge of the Sith, we had 80 figures in that line. And when you look at Rise of Skywalker, we only had like six or seven. And it's all Disney. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> I put this one in because it was G. Williams 711. <laughs> that, it, it, that wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> will you fix the quality of the black series figures i'm like what that's got to be just trolling because those are really good figures echo they've, a lot what they've definitely come a long way uh versus like the rogue one figures and what's coming out now because those rogue, rogue one black series figures were horrible yeah I mean, the, the faces on some of those were kind of rough there's a reason why those are being sold at walmart for three cents in clearance Um, what a fun time yeah echo alive one one two one two two underscore um when will we get more african-american and asian representation in the vintage collection still no finn still no rose or fennec just want to mention that because i thought that was important um well, but yeah i would love a fennec figure yeah well what i mean when when the rose black series people were selling them for twenty dollars for a dozen yeah. So you can get a dozen roses for Valentine's Day. That's your answer. Yeah. No, I get that. And I'm not saying that we need Rose, but, you know, Finn is a, a popular character and we don't have him in the vintage collection. Fennec is from the Mandalorian, which is like printing money at this point. So Squibbo says, why can't you all figure out what Mac- Mark Hamill actually looks like? <laughs> which I thought is funny because they've struggled for years to figure out what. Mark Hamill looks like in an action figure. 
Luke Link 2 says, what are the odds of you giving me free action figures for no apparent reason? I'll say good things, I promise. I promise to say them too. The C can our show. When do you plan on ending Black Series and Vintage Lions to start something new for collectors? Where are they going to go? They're just trolling. Okay. The last one here, I promise. Baby Chillin asks, when will you be restocking Cara Dune action figures? <laughs> Never? So I thought that was some expert level trolling. Oh, I yeah. forgot about the releases this week. StarWars.com released new Black Series figures. There's the Clone Wars um, card back. Yeah. I, troop- oh, go ahead. No, no. When you, would, when you had announced this, I was like, great, more effing repacks. But you called me. You pulled the... Uh, you're like, no, they're not. Was, All right. Then I looked and you, you fixed it. You told yeah, me. They're not. they're not. Clone Wars... Um- Clone Trooper Echo, Clone Pilot Hawk, Obi Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker are all on their way with the 50th anniversary logo on the packaging. These look like the 2008 line where there's a Clone Trooper helmet in the background and then the bubble kind of curves out and the figure's kind of in that bubble. Um, I think Obi Wan Kenobi recycled some parts from the Walgreens exclusive that was the from the other version of the Clone Wars, Tartakowski, if I say that right i think there's some of the recycling at least in the head i think they've pulled the head forward from that but the uh, clone troopers look different i'm sure they've recycled torsos or legs or something along those lines but um whenever i see these new clone troopers i'm like well they're, they're obviously going to make a red version at some point and a green version and a yellow version so we'll get that but the weird thing is that anakin doesn't look like hayden christensen obi-wan looks dead on for you mcgregor but hayden doesn't look anything like i mean that anakin doesn't look like hayden right i hadn't looked that close so i'm gonna have to check it and then the weird thing that's missing is ahsoka which is a beloved character from that 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 show so i'm i'm guessing that that might be later down the line these are all target exclusives which means without without a bot you're not going to get one because those sell, sell out within seconds. On, Freaking Target. Yeah, Target.com, because they don't do bots. I mean, they don't do, uh, uh, what is the, the check, the check to make sure I'm not a robot thing. You're right. So that's that's the news for the week. Yay! Sorry Freaking to take target. up a half hour of your time. Well, you already said, hey, dude, I'm going to take a half an hour with news. So Yeah. It's on ICCCCC. Yes, I see, 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 see. Jason, this was your first one. I know we've talked about it on several different podcasts. Yeah. We, we did one. We did a live room sale podcast, which I'm really happy. So thank you for the 50-something people that downloaded that because it was sort of an experiment on my end um, to not advertise that we um, we had released it, sort of release it on the sly and not ad, you know, not do anything with it, just release it and see what happens. And we had like 55 downloads of that, which thank you. We, uh, and um, yeah. so that, that kind of goes that, you know, that means that, Hey, we got 55 of you guys watching, you know, subscribing to us. So thank you for doing that. Uh, and then we did a, another one like live at IC, which was on YouTube. I'm not sure how many of you saw that, but uh, you can search it. It's on our Facebook page. So if we, if we repeat ourselves, it's because, it, you know, Sorry, uh, because we're going to repeat ourselves because this is the third time we've talked about IC. Um, but but Jason, and the last. this and the last, yes, or until next year. Uh, but this was your first IC. Uh, this was my third. Um, how do you feel about it as far as like a toy show goes? Well, actually, it's not a toy show; it's a convention. How was your, your what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I had like I, said, like I was mentioning before, I was exhausted so i was running on fumes throughout the whole thing so that did play a part in my head and i also my first point of entry for conventions was celebration and so i'm comparing every convention to that one and so this is not celebration it's smaller which smaller doesn't mean necessarily mean it's a bad thing they had their celebrity guests they had toys they had um cosplays they had video game competitions they had what else swag and stuff like that um so it was fun but i felt like it was closer to toy lanta in scale than celebration i don't know if that's a negative or positive 
Um, I don't, I don't mean to be negative by saying, you know, it's a small celebration. Like it, that's just my read on the situation. Um, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Just want to make sure that <laughs> I'm overstating that it's just a neutral statement. Right. But, um, but yeah, like it was set up in a hotel ballroom, which is exactly what Toylanta was. Um, Toylanta didn't have the guests. And I, I wonder like if, if we forego the guests and use that room for more vendors, you know, I walked the floor a couple of times and, and felt like I had seen everything by lunchtime. And it didn't feel that way at Celebration. But Celebration's I, much bigger. Right. I agree with that statement. I've I've been um, a proponent to turning turning it from a convention, quote unquote, to a toy show, quote unquote. You know, because um, I if they don't have this, I don't know how well the celebrities are doing. This year, they had them in the years past, you've been able to walk in there walk the celebrity aisle and talk to them and get an autograph and just pay them this year they did it more like celebration to where you um you walk in and you you um, you have a counter that you go to first and it's like this is where i want to go i want to buy this guy's autograph and you pay for the autograph and then they'll they kind of had a queue outside because of, because of social distancing and covid and everything so they had a queue outside of the of the room and then they called you in uh, and, and the reason I'm giving that example is because in years past, when you walk to the celebrity section, they're just sitting there talking to you. There's no, there's no lines for any of the celebrities. The only celebrities that really had lines were like the guy that, that played uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy, uh, you know, the, the William Shatner. They were, they were doing that one a little bit different. The high eye end guys had, um, you know, lines, but everybody else you could just walk up to and pay them for an autograph or help you know, talk to him for 15, 20 minutes and tell him, have a great day and walk away. Um, Cause that's what uh, uh, I want to say the, the chick from back to the future. I, I can't think of her. I want to say Claudia Gray, but that's an author from star Wars, not the same girl. Um, but she was there. I forget, no, it's not Jennifer Gray. Huh? Forget it. Never mind. Jennifer, Never mind. Gen, the girl who played the first Jennifer in the yeah. original back to the future. Right. We talked to her for 10 or 15 minutes and didn't even pay for an autograph because there's no line and she's sitting there bored. So, that would be my for number one suggestion would be turn it into a toy show versus a convention. And then you could, you know, lower the price from $40 a day down to like $20 a day and, you know, be happy with it. Cause I mean, my, and I'm not talking bad about the show. This is just my personal opinion. If you would do that, you'd get more people locals in, you know, I don't know if there's a big pull for a convention like that in Tennessee or not. But I know you, you, you don't see locals. You see people that have traveled for this show. And I know personally, if I didn't know the show and I didn't know Michael and I didn't know his stuff, if I was going in there blind as a local going, oh, there's a toy show or a convention. Oh, it's $40 to get in for the day. I want to go. Right. Uh, because I even Dragon Con pushes it and they're 40 or $50 a day. And um, I won't spend that, you know, Dragon Con's fun and, and everything. But if I'm going to go look at toys, I'm not going to spend 40 or $50 just to get in the door to go look at toys. Yeah, I agree. You know, Toy Atlanta, I think has it pretty well because it's $50 for the weekend. And to me, I'm, I have no problem paying that $50 because it gets you in early. It gets you in an hour early. I think this year they let you in on Friday night to do the, uh, the uh, preview night. So you had like nobody on the floor while you're trying to make deals. It, you know, my opinion is, is, you know, with, especially with it being in a hotel ballroom, he could have done, or, you know, get rid of the celebrities or hell have Daniel Logan there. If you want, I agree. Daniel Logan's a cool guy, you know, cause you got the Boba Fett, you know, if you want to, and they should, you know, have Daniel Logan, have the Kenner guys there, uh, you know, maybe one or two other celebrities and you'd have a much better show in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, speaking of toys, they had everything you can imagine. Vintage, they had a lot of vintage, a lot of carded vintage, a lot of loose vintage, modern figures, black series. They had artwork and swag. It was all there. They had a great toy selection. I felt like everything I ever wanted from a toy show. Like I felt the selection at ICCC was better than Toy Lanta because I'm into the Star Wars, not the Joe. And there seemed to be, I mean, it used to be Joe Lanta, but there was much more Star Wars available. So I enjoyed Toy Lanta's selection more, excuse me, ICC's selection more than Toy Lanta's. Right. And that's purely because IC is a, is a, uh, 
Strong. Star Wars show and Toy Lana is more of a Joe show. Yeah. Um, I get that. Um, and, and I think the reason why it's a quote unquote mini celebration is because people travel to it and yeah. you see a lot of people that you'd only see at celebration at this show. Right. Um, which that's why I kind of log it in as a mini celebration. The, the room sales on Friday night was insane. Uh, I mean, watch your video. You saw that was, we were right before that video, op- the doors open, we're talking to each other, go, man, I hope it's, it's, you know, blown out when these doors open and they open up and it's heaven, you know, and, and you see, you see mine and Jerry, all three of us just reaction to that, which was just, it was an incredible sight to see. Yeah. That was a blast. We'll get into room sales in a minute, but the, um, uh, some of the uh, pricing, we you mentioned the vinyl Cape Jawa for $20,000. There's also a Forces of Destiny Ahsoka for 200 I wanted that so bad. <laughs> yeah, those were like Entertainment Earth at one point for what was it 20, 25 bucks? So and that Vin- that was that was one that's one of the figures we need for the because my wife does the Forces of Destiny. It kind of started uh, off for something for our daughter, and then it my wife kind of took it over when my daughter was like, I am not into it anymore. And uh when I saw that Ahsoka, because we've been looking for the Ahsoka and he wanted fifty dollars or two hundred dollars for her, and I went in there and towards the end of Saturday offered him seventy five just to see what he said. And he was like, uh, "That's your offer." I was like, "Yeah, that's my offer because I'm probably the only one that's come in this show and right. saw seen her and went, oh crap." And he goes, "Well, actually, there was a few people, but I'm going to hold on to her because her show's coming out, and then it's going to be more money." He also had a card at Ahsoka for seven hundred dollars. Yeah, I was just about to mention that uh, he's the same vendor who had that that price for that which i was shocked but then clifton boggs came in and he said he saw the same figure sell for nine hundred dollars yeah so 750 seems to be a deal then dude and and it was um the last i see two years ago a hundred dollars for uh, ahsoka was selling for a hundred dollars yeah. and i was at that point i was like who the hell's ahsoka and why is she a hundred dollars Uh, Power of the Force 2, Luke Skywalker with the short saber and a long tray was selling for 100 bucks. I remember seeing that and be like, what difference Jesus does it make? Christ. But that's insane. So it seems like the Power of the Force 2 is starting to pick up too. I mean, we're wow. talking, what, 25 years ago? Wow, that's amazing that that's the stuff that's happening with that stuff. I always thought it would be the Phantom Menace stuff that would pick up before that Power of the Force stuff, uh, yeah. Force 2 stuff did. But that's a variant. I don't know. Like the regular figures are not selling for that price. It's that variant that's selling. And I mean, it even feels weird to call that modern. I know it's not vintage because they kind of close that off in 85, 86, but that doesn't feel like modern anymore. That feels more vintagey. Right. And it that's sort of where people are they're they're they don't understand when we say modern Star Wars figures are 25 years old, but that's right. just the way that we are. Uh, because the the vintage stuff did end about 82 and i i think we're going to end up having to come up with a different name for the uh power of the force 2 stuff soon yeah power of the four probably like the lucas era in general from what 95 to 2005 Mm -hmm. up to revenge of the sith and then you have the clone wars era and then you have the disney era i don't know um black series emperor which was an amazon exclusive which was what 50 bucks maybe um, yeah i think it was like 40 is what uh i saw him when he first came out i thought it was closer to 50 or 60 but you sell him for 200 dollars. oh my god on the show floor that's what they're asking for i bought a decent hammerhead with a blaster for 25 which was surprising because i was just preparing for like 50 dollars per figure so to find and I'm slowly building up that vintage collection, the not the vintage collection, the vintage original, whatever you want to call them, the, the original run of figures. I'm starting to buy that stuff back up again. So I didn't think that was a bad price for that. Uh, uh, the plaster. Yeah, because I was looking, I'm looking for a Luke farm boy, a good Luke farm, farm boy. And I got quoted $200 for one. Wow. And they're going for about 100 Is And, and still even at 100 I'm like, I'm just going to wait because I'm trying to do a poor man's uh, 12 back run and, and I need a Luke and a Leia to finish that run. And at this point, I think I'm just going to shelve that for a year or two and see what happens. Yeah. During room sales, there was someone selling the uh, blasters and lightsabers and stuff like 
Yeah, and I need a yellow saber for my Luke. It's got a blue one. Someone swapped it out at some point. And so I need to get that. But they were selling the sabers for 25 bucks. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to spend that right now on just a, a lightsaber. Yeah. It, it, some of the pricing was was pretty – like I said, some of the stuff was was reasonable and then other stuff was just crazy. And I I talked to one vendor and he was like, dude, I'm selling stuff for my I don't want to sell it price. And yeah. it wasn't a I don't want to sell it price. It was a you're an idiot for selling it this much. And they're getting it. They were getting it. So I don't know if people were just – were that – eager to buy stuff or they had the, you know, the, the, uh, their stimulus check sitting in their pocket and they're like, I yeah. can afford to buy it. And they didn't just didn't care. Yeah. People weren't traveling last year. They weren't eating out. They weren't going places. So all that money is just sitting in the bank account and they're like, well, why not? Yeah. Um, during room sales, the vintage collection Cara Dune was being asked for $40, mm -hmm. which is it's a sign. Of, I think that's a good sign because during our last recap, the vintage collection pricing, I had that about $63. So that's come down a little bit. Yeah. And I think $40, it, it would suck paying that for that figure. But I think that's, you know, I, I would feel better paying that than 60. I mean, because you're dub basically double the price. They completely erased Cara Dune from the map. She pissed somebody off high up at Lucasfilm. Yeah. I don't want to get into politics. Right. My favorite part of the whole thing was room sales. That was I mean, mine was too. Go yeah, ahead. there there's things that available that, that I've never seen before. Like I'm just like picking through prototypes. Like that was amazing. Yeah. But I think we need a convention that goes from eight to twelve at night. You book the entire <laughs> hotel. You book the entire hotel for the weekend. You let people just hit the town during the day. They come back at five. Maybe there's dinner and you hang out and then eight o'clock. Maybe there's a ballroom with people that are vendors. Maybe you book the lobby for room sales or whatever. And the whole hotel is just the convention. It's closed off. It's insular. So it's only collectors. It's only for collectors. So there's some exclusivity to that. And it's just a room sale convention. I think that would be amazing and fun. You, you can hang out with people. You can go browse the bins or whatever. It would just be so much fun. I, I think you're onto something there, man, because it does feel like room sales. I don't know if it's because it's free. Uh, for people to set up so it does you do got to get those guys that are you know that's all the time they, they only going to set up at room sale or maybe those people only know okay this i've got two hours or three hours to make my money so they're going to bring the good stuff out and, and maybe maybe you're on to something there man that'd be fun yeah what'd you like about room sales like you said it's just seeing the stuff that you're not going to see and seeing um the prototypes come out you saw there was some uh Clone Wars prototypes. There were some prototype lightsabers that were out there. There was uh, a, a wood mold for the Batmobile that it, that was sitting out there. It it is you you're seeing the oddball stuff that never shows up, and it's not going to be on the show floor because that I guess people are saving the good stuff for room sales. Do you want to go through what we picked up because we kind of covered that during room sale, the room sale live version. Yeah, we can cover because I picked up a couple of more things. Uh, but yeah, oh. let's cover what we picked up, man. Let's cover. Let's let's do the last like two three weeks because we hadn't really even talked for that. So I mean, let, let's do it. Yeah, I mentioned that I picked up the Bo-Katan and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to remember if anything else came. Oh, um, a Boba Fett. No, Entertainment Earth Boba Fett's coming. So I picked up a Boba Fett during room sale. Uh, Got to slow down my brain. I got excited about the whole room sale convention thing and my mind's racing a mile a minute now so but i did pick up a vintage collection boba fett with the digital readout kind of engraved in the upper left hand corner of his armor or is it right it depends on which way you're looking at him anyways it's, the left, it's over his heart it's yeah it's over his left but if you're looking at it it's on the right if you're holding the figure in your hand it's on the right side but it's his left but Entertainment Earth has shipped me my other versions, so I'll have one to open and put on the sale barge. So I was waiting for that figure to come out so I can do that. You're actually going to open yeah. something? Yeah, I'm opening one. I might actually have my kids do it because it's going to hurt my heart. But <laughs> Oh, somebody on the show floor thought that the version of Boba Fett without that indentation is going to be the one that's worth money because it's it's a production change. Yeah, maybe. It, does, it doesn't seem like there's an orange version because none of those have hit the... So the behind the figure itself, there's an, a yellowish frame 
to kind of frame out the figure on the card back itself. There was a version they showed off with the orange version, but I haven't seen anything hit any of the Facebook channels, eBay, things like that. So I think there was a production run and they stopped that. And I don't think those were actually made. Right. But that's my speculation. But as far as ICCC pickups, I, I did pick up that Boba Fett. I picked up my prototype Han. He's all green. He's got the blaster. So that completes my um, uh, Black Series Han Solo run, I think, unless something else pops up. I don't have any hard copies or anything like that. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, I picked up that Diego Gomez pin of Dead Bob Boba Fett. And you can hear me do that live on the ICC room sales <laughs> version of the podcast. Vintage Hammerhead blaster, uh, vintage ham- Hammerhead figure with blaster. I picked up the vintage um, Yoda looking mask. I got that part of the Georgia Alliance raffle. Um, I won that. It's, it was from Hot Topic. I'm looking at it right now. It's like the Ben Cooper masks, I think. Is that it? It's the old ones that used to be like flimsy plastic you put on your face and then there was the elastic that kind of went around your head yeah it's a remake of the old school halloween stuff with the plastic it's just the mask instead yeah. of getting the uh the whole plastic the, outfit the that went final outfit yeah. yeah um and then i picked up two kins kim simmon prints i was with you at the time you were buying one i'm like oh, i'm just gonna throw 15 dollars and buy two right hope you don't i hope you don't mind yeah well, it is what it is I got, I, <laughs> you picked it up <laughs> I got Akbar and Han Hoth. They, they were pretty picked over at that time. Yeah, they were picked over the minute I saw that deal going down on Friday, and they were picked over when I saw them. And then I bought a '93 back print from Kim Simmons a couple weeks ago, so he signed that, and I also got Jim Swergen and Tom Clark to sign it too. And Jim was the principal product designer, if I have that right, for Kenner, and Tom Clark was marketing director or marketing manager for the star wars line from like 79 he came in right like right after star wars but he was in, during empire and return of the jedi right and i think uh tom had a little bit to do with the micro collection stuff but um going to jim jim is yeah jim's sort of the reason why we have star wars toys today he was the one that they sent out to um california to watch the movie he actually tells a story about how he was in the first audience to see star wars um and he was just he was blown away by it he they had gone and said some there was some other movie that they were going to see and then he 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 did a panel jim did a panel just by himself so that was one of the cool things with the ic panels is they did all the kenner kenner guys had their own panel and uh jim was talking about how he was the in the audience for the first time people saw star wars and able was able to see the reaction and he actually was able to say i'm this is the only time people are going to see this movie having no clue what they're walking into. And, you know, me and Dan from New York are sitting there listening to him and we both look at each other with, and we're, we're cheering up and we've got goosebumps just listening to this guy talk about that moment in time and how everybody was freaking out at the end of it. And he had to go get a pay for phone going and yell at all the Kenner guys going, you gotta, we've got to do this. It's going to be amazing. And, you know, just the people, people's minds being blown by this movie uh it was just a cool little time capsule um and being able to hear that was was all was awesome did you hear tom clark speak tc yes i did because he was talking about forlom oh yeah his uh he actually everybody thought forlom and they kind of made a big deal about this because everybody thought forlom was for love of money but tom clark is claiming it's for love or money so Mm -hmm. that sort of changes the way up and yes, apparently yeah, go go no, no no and apparently what his thing was why zuckus and forlom got flip-flopped was something about um returns or money or rights or something because he named forlom and then they swapped it with zuckus because that's sort of his thinking is because he was like i named this figure but no you named that we swapped it over and sent it to this figure so that was sort of the thinking of why forlom and zuckus were swapped around yeah, Lucasfilm couldn't figure out who named them, and they were just afraid of a lawsuit and having to pay royalties to somebody who named a figure. So they swapped it out. So if Tom came back and he did sign off, so it was it was just like a paper error 
like a clerical error. They couldn't figure it out and it was just filed away in a different folder or something like that. But if Tom ever came back and said, I named Forlom, you need to give me the money. And they're like, well, Forlom is this guy and you claim you named this robot here and it's not this insect looking guy. And you know what I mean? And so that's why they did that. Yeah. So that was lawsuits. Yeah, that was kind of fun hearing hearing that for the first time. Because I think that was a, that was his first uh, convention ever. Yeah. So what'd you pick up? What I pick? Oh, geez, I got pretty good, man. I did pretty good because, um, like you said, I had that. Uh, shoot, what am I thinking? The uh, that money burning a hole in my pocket. So I, I was doing good. Um, I did a. I picked up a Bill and Ted phone booth, which was my find of the show. Um, still sealed in the box, which I thought I'd never own a phone booth, let alone a sealed one. Um, so that was sort of my find of the show. That was like Thursday night walking around. I just happened to look up and see it sitting in the dude's booth. Uh, and then later on, I think Saturday or Sunday towards the end of the show, walked right by the same guy's booth and he had the cassette tape still sealed. Um, and I picked that up for dirt cheap. And, uh, he also had a, uh, I didn't pick this one up, but I should have, because it was just so cheap. He had a Grim Reaper for like half of what it should have been. And nobody that sat all weekend. I was really surprised to see that didn't get picked up. Um, but anyway, I picked up the uh, Black Series Snow Speeder, which did. Uh, I did. I did pick that up with the Luke. Um, and he also had a Forces of Destiny Chewy, a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Chewy uh, from Forces of Destiny. I picked that up in the same deal. Um, I, huh? Sweet. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. I don't know what it is about the new plastic they're lo- using, but it, I, I guess it's safety regulations or something, but it just feels cheap. Um, it, it's bendable and pliable and stuff. It's not the hard, cool plastic that I'm used to. And I'm just, I'm not happy with it. So I don't know if they're doing it because of safety regulations or not, but I mean, do you have, have you opened any of your vehicles? Is that like it? Cause I know you opened the, the sail barge. Is it like that with the sail barge? Opening. What is this opening bull? Yeah. No, the, the sail barge is premium. I have no complaints about the sail barge or any of the uh, the uh, skiffs that surround it. The, um, the other thing that I've opened is that Millennium Falcon. And the only thing that I don't understand, they didn't put the rear seats in the cockpit with that one, which is the only weird thing. But the quality, the plastic, I have no problem with any of that. Okay. Because I know I had it on because I've opened up I've, on all the modern stuff that I've opened. It's kind of been that cheap. It just feels cheap and bendy and stuff. It's not rigid. And I, I just don't understand why they did it like that. In talking about the Black Series, it did pick, it did open up the, the Tie Fighter. I have no problems with that. The Black Series Tie Fighter, the um, Emphis Nest speeder bike, that seems premium. I, I don't. It's been open for a while, and none of it is sagging, and it's got that you know long front, which over time could possibly sag, and that's not sagging. So maybe it's just the snow speeder. Yeah, I, but I've noticed it on like the the po, po Dameron X Wing kind of feels cheap. And, and I, cheap i'm using the wrong term just because it's a different style plastic and i just I, i'm not sure why it's it's like that but um anyway back to the my, my pickups mm-hmm. i picked up a piece of uh like it's a bean art it's sort of like uh, airbrushed art and i was kind of surprised because i walked up to the guy's booth on sunday and he still had it sitting there so i don't know if it just wasn't sitting out or people weren't interested in it so i picked that up uh picked up the jim uh kim simmons uh kim Simmons, I, I put Jim Simmons for some reason, but Kim Simmons prints. Um, I picked up uh, a couple of die cast, uh, the, the Death Star world, a front and a back shot of that. And then they also had one, uh, a die cast of a Wampa dragging Luke into the, into the Wampa cave. So I picked that one up. Uh, I already said the forces of destiny, Chewie. I picked up a ceramic Darth Vader bank, uh, again, walking around on Sunday and there it was sitting. So I picked that up for pretty cheap. Uh, and it, I got a couple of micro uh, paint samples. Uh, there was a, a guy that when, when we were hanging out, we hung out at, at Trent's on Thursday night and a guy, uh, Ryan from Cincinnati brought out his uh, micro collection stuff that he had for sale. And he had a couple, some paint samples. And um, I picked up a Wampa that we weren't really sure it was bagged and the bag was, it was stapled. So it wasn't open. So we're not going to undo the staple because it's a 40 year old staple. Uh, you could tell because it's, it's oxidized a little bit, but you can't really tell that what the baggie without opening it up and looking at it, you can't really tell that much, but uh, 
when I got home, I, I, I bought it thinking it was a production figure in a bag. And when I got home, I sent a couple to Mark, sent some pictures to Mark in New York. And we talked for a minute and comparing it with the production version. And he's pretty sure because the gloss is just different. It's a different piece that it's a paint sample, bagged paint sample, Wampa micro collection. So that's pretty cool to add to my collection. And then I also picked up an Obi-Wan uh, paint sample. That's on that. Yeah. So that's, I think, everything that I bought. Uh at IC, I did get, uh, while I was at IC, well, actually, while we just jumping back even further, while we were in Cincinnati, uh, Invict, Invicta had some a sale on some of their watches and they had a Boba Fett watch uh, that I picked up for dirt cheap for under a hundred bucks. And I also picked up a, uh, while I was in, well, actually, while we were eating lunch on Friday, my wife is sending me pictures or Saturday. Like I said, my whole, that those last two, three weeks have been just a, you know, mine, yeah, you know, I had no clue. We're just uh, no clue what was going on the past two or three weeks because of being in Cincinnati and then being in IC the next week. But she had, my wife was sending me pictures of uh, Bill and Ted stuff she'd picked up for me. She, the, she picked me up a two pack and the, the rock and roll two pack or cassette two pack that showed up and I'm waiting on an Abe to show up. I have no clue when that's going to get here, but hopefully that'll get here today. Yeah, I did get my, my Boba Fett first shot micro machines. And I also got the paint sample slave one. But like you were saying, it's in a baggie. It's sealed in a baggie. And I've never seen micro machines in a baggie. So I'm not going to open it. And I'm pretty sure it's a paint sample. It's a silver one. Yeah. Those did arrive. But the other thing that I saw that was cool, Daryl DePriest came and he used to be, he came to ICCC and he was the marketing manager, brand manager, something along those lines for that. The Hasbro Star Wars version stuff. And I mean, he's the the kind of the grandfather of the vintage collection. It was his idea, and he brought that to fruition. And he's he's also the author of that new um, vintage collection archive edition book that's coming next month in May. Uh, at least it's supposed to be mailed in May. And uh, he brought a poster poster proof for the club, the Georgia Lions Club, to raffle off. And he got Kim Simmons, who took the photo of the poster, to um, sign it and, and marked it proof 101. But well. Daryl was there. He was talking to Tom Clark, TC, and it was just cool to see these two uh, uh, as a marketing person, seeing the the old school, you know, Kenner marketer talk to the new Hasbro marketer and just kind of rub el- elbows and kind of talk about their experiences. And it was just cool to watch and be a fly on the wall. Yeah, that's the one thing that that that's cool that that they did right. IC did right. I think was getting those Kinner guys and having them come out. Cause last, uh, when, um, crap, I'm going to lose his name again. Uh, uh, like Steve Sansweet. There we go. Sansweet. I got it right. You know, he had Steve Sansweet come out the last couple of years. And I guess this year with coronavirus and stuff, he, he wouldn't make the trip, but, uh, you know, he, he's done a good job of bringing in the old school Kinner guys and, uh, you know, having that, you know, uh, being able to talk to him because you know we were talking uh, I guess you and I and me and Dan it was just like I said it was just such a, a whirlwind trip you know who would have thought that 40 years ago we'd talk to these guys and they we could we could be considered quote-unquote friends or they'd at least know who we were or, or we could say hey I'm with the Georgia club and they'd be like oh yeah I know those guys it, it's just it's it's weird to think that kind of that, that way yeah I, I, and Jim Swergen said he's got more people he wants to bring more sculptors and stuff like that. So that'd be awesome. That And truthfully, I think that's the way that if, if I was uh, running the IC, that's where I'd go. I'd, I'd bring in all these Kenner guys and, and I'd have a room full of Kenner guys. Cause I think that's what people really want. I mean, this having the celebrities there is cool, but they're, they're C list celebrities. You know, he does bring in the power Rangers. So I don't know where they fall in the, in the th- room of scheme of things. But to me, it's like, you know, B and C list celebrities where you could have the Kinner guys and they'd be treated like A list celebrities because that's who we want. That's who a collector, you, you know, you, you're wanting to meet the Kinner guys, meet the designers, meet, the, hear their stories. Uh, you know, TC had a freaking bagged uh, um, Snaggletooth. Snaggletooth, blue Snaggletooth sitting there. And then he had a Revenge of the Jedi sweatshirt sitting there. So he, he's yeah. like, I didn't save much, but these are the two items I saved. And they're, you know, they're holy grails for people. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, to to us, they'll always be royalty. 
<laughs> exactly. And, and it's made me appreciate the last few years, uh, actually the last six months to a year of this stuff. It's made me want to learn more about these guys and learn more about the process and learn more, you know, appreciate. It's made me appreciate it more. And I think, you know, that's sort of where, uh, you know, I'm, my focus is going is to learn the history of Kenner and learn the history of, of Star Wars. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to buy that Engineering and Empire book. I think a lot of that's in there, sounds like. Yeah, then that, that'd be a cool book to get. And I'm also probably going to end up doing that Vintage Collection book, even though I'm not in the Vintage Collection, because that just sounds like a cool book. And just to support those guys, um, it just, the, the, just the history behind that book, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to support it, uh, just because uh, Daryl DePriest, he was so cool to the club. Um, rich rich a lot yeah those guys are so cool and, and giving us access to that book early and yeah it, it's that yeah and i know we need you, to, huh? i know we need to wrap it up but like yeah go to blue mi.lk to learn more on how to buy that vintage collection the, the yeah the vintage collection archive edition book or whatever it's called yeah but they were just saying like that that interview we conducted um help them sell more books help people were starting to add things on that, that interview that we did help them get people excited and get more more people you know, like i was just saying buying stuff and it's just so cool to be part of to help the community like that i don't know it's just it's cool that you were able to see that your actions have reactions or yeah you know like when that book was announced, I'm like, that's amazing. But then cut to two years later where I'm conducting an interview or not, I'm not, Jerry's doing the interview. I'm doing all the AV stuff, but together we're, we're doing this interview and it's helping them sell more stuff for the book and the add-ons and stuff. And it's just like, how did I get here? It's just a cool moment in my life, I think. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy how things have going. And actually, um, as I was going through Facebook while we were going, well, getting going and stuff, I was checking Facebook and I saw a memory that I was sharing four years ago. Hey, I just started this Star Wars club with some friends of mine. So it's today is sort of the official four year anniversary of the Star Wars club. So in four years, we're talking to the Kenner guys and they know who the heck we are. It is just, it blows my mind that in four short years that we're at this point. I gotta figure out that peach snaggle tooth idea. Say that again. You gotta figure out that peach snaggle tooth idea i had for the fifth anniversary of the club which is do, do a peach snaggle tooth yeah that's there's what red, they go ahead that's, there's red snaggle tooth there's blue snaggle tooth but i was like we should do a peach snaggle tooth for the club because it's the peach state that would be awesome because that's what they were talking about in the chats i'm kind of you know it, it sucks facebook sucks sometimes but you, you you just get inundated with stuff so yeah they were talking about that in the chats a minute ago so oh that's really? what they, yeah that's what they were talking about the peach snaggle tooth I have to get back in there because we've been recording. Yeah. We did have one question this week. Yes. Do you want to read it? Do yeah. It just up? Justin Haney asks, "What was the coolest piece you saw at the event? What was the rarest piece? Why didn't you buy me anything?" With a <laughs> laughing face. Well, I could answer why we didn't buy you anything is because Blake. I looked over at Blake during room sales, and he had you and uh, Justin and SDQ on his on his phone going through everything. So I, I thought you had that crap handled. And if I'm not mistaken, I helped him buy something. Yeah. I think. I don't remember because it was it's all a blur and I was exhausted. But I, I did some live stuff. I just kind of walked the floor. I had the camera messed up. So I I had a landscape and it was profile. And I didn't realize it until like towards the end of my live broadcast. But I think I did connect Justin with someone who purchased something. So I did help somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> what was the coolest piece you saw at the event? Oh, oh I... the cool shit. It would probably be that Ahsoka Forces of Destiny, just because I'd been looking for it. Um, it was that or the the phone booth, and I brought the phone booth home with me. But those yeah. two pieces made me kind of stop in my tracks and go, "Oh crap! I've been looking for that." Um, and, and, you know, what I think is cool is going to be different than what other people think is cool because, yeah. you know, I've been looking, you know, when, when you're looking for a piece for a year and you finally see it, it just, you know, you got to stop. It stops you in your tracks. What about you? What was the coolest piece you saw? I think you know, this was my first, my first 
room sales event and that was exciting and i step off the elevator and i start recording things but the first thing that caught my my eye was that battle droid tank from uh, phantom menace the prototype with the yellow and the pink and the blue colors and it was just like oh this is the big leagues this is it you're in it yeah this is the the good stuff here and i think that was the coolest piece i saw because of where i was and the, the, the emotion of the and just like the realization that this is it. This this is the big time. Yeah, they they don't mess around at room sales, dude. What was the uh, rarest piece you? you... Who rarest piece would either be those or would be basically anything that guy had on the table, man. He had those two models, and then he had a, a the couple of uh, first shot uh, lightsabers, and then he had the the wood mold. I think the the rarest piece I saw would have been that wood mold Batmobile, just because that was. Like I said, dude, seeing a getting a wood mold to me is is the ultimate. But uh, yeah, that'd probably be the anything sitting on that table at room sales was some of the rarest stuff I think we'd seen at that yeah. old convention. I'm not going to say names. I'm not going to say what what they brought. But there was an individual who brought in for a private audience uh, a rare prototype collection. Nothing was for sale. It was just like here, here's what I have. Um, and to see that amount of pre-production items as a personal collection was pretty amazing and i'm gonna say that's the rarest piece because that's just a very unique collection yeah did you i thought you had left right after that or did you i, I left right? right after that okay so you got to see that collection yes that was that, that's just yeah that was an incredible moment uh because he did have some cool stuff in there so. uh, in that in that lot but yeah you're right just knowing that there's just that many prototypes sitting in that collection was was pretty amazing. So that was cool. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to reveal person or what it was. Um, just just for their own, because we didn't get permission, and I don't know if they want that out there. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Just going back to the panels here, you know, um, they had I guess his name was Dicky. Is that the guy's name? The the stunt man that did the the fall into the Sarlacc pit is fat. That sounds familiar. It. I think that was him. I may be wrong, but the guy who did the fall for the he because he played like five or six characters in return of the jedi uh he didn't realize that he was quote unquote famous for playing boba fett that hell he didn't even realize he played <laughs> boba fett until like 20 years later his daughter came home from school with a book and he she was like hey you're in this book for playing boba fett and he's like who the hell's boba fett and he when he she showed him a picture he was like i i think i remember putting that costume on and playing it for five minutes <laughs> That's irony right there. One of the most famous characters in Star Wars. You don't even know that you were him. Yeah, because his, his excuse was he played so many characters. Yeah. You know, he was a stuntman. So he had so many suits on doing so many different stunts that he doesn't remember who all he played. And the only reason he got to play Fett was because he was like third or third or fourth in line after everybody had gotten hurt. And he was the one that could do the fall from the Sar into the Sarlacc pit. And that's why he got to do it. That's awesome good story yeah so i think that's my huh anything else i don't know man hours in yeah dude yeah we're hour and 45 minutes in man it's i see as much as i I, you know yes i will i complain about i see yes i'm gonna complain about everything just because i think there's pluses and minuses to every show um it's a fun show yes it's expensive um to go to because it is it's forty dollars a day to get in um i i think this year versus last year if i'm going to compare because people were kind of well what what was this year versus last year's you know or the last two years i kind of miss the rate the, the rodeo versus the hotel just because in the rodeo you could see everything you knew where everything was because it's just one big big room and you could stand up top and be like, okay, I can go over here and see the club tables. I can go down there and see all the vi- the, the vendors. And it, it, I think it had, had its, it had its advantages and its disadvantages being in the rodeo uh, because you were able to walk the floor and then you could go up top and walk the top. And they kind of had everything divided a little bit better in the old venue versus the new venue. Um, because like I, I've always said, every, every, uh, show or convention or whatever the panels are, are an afterthought and the signage what you know you were in the main room and then the panels were like across the the, the hotel almost 
and to get to the panels, even how it, and even the bathroom situation, the bathroom was way bigger at this one. So, and it was in the middle of everything. So that was nice. But yeah. when you, when you walk to the bathroom, you kind of walk through a security gate to get to them. And then to get back to the, the room floor, if you were general admission, you had to walk all the way around and go back through security again, which I thought was kind of a, a flaw in the way things were. But I, I think it was so they could wand everybody because they had metal detectors and stuff. And, um, you know, maybe that's what it was. But um, to me, that was a flaw in the system, because if you wanted to get to the, like, the main panel, you had to go through this security and then go through this exit and then come back around and go through security again. Um, and it wasn't marked very well because, I mean, when you walked in the show, it was a party and it, and it felt like a party because that main hallway, they had music going and they had dancers and they had the 501st and they had, uh, you know, it, it felt like a party when you first walked in. But then you, it's you walked into the room, the, the main hall. And that's, if, if you didn't know any better, you were like, that's all there is to this show. Uh, I was talking to the guy who won the, uh, the PlayStation five, they did a mortal Kombat tournament to win a PlayStation five. And he's like, dude, there were 10 people in that tournament to win a PlayStation five. Nobody knew about it. I mean, they were, it was announced, but it was never, never re-announced saying, okay, cool. We're having this this Mortal Kombat tournament for PlayStation 5, y'all come up to this room. There was a, a PA system in there because there were announcements being made and they were just like emergency announcements. Hey, we found this set of keys. Hey, we found this. Hey, you know, and it could have just as easily been said, hey, you know, we're having a Mortal Kombat tournament in the in the game room. Come 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 play when a PlayStation 5. Um, and just stuff like that. Uh, the, the podcasting room was cool, but yet again, I mean, it wasn't used to the fullest potential. It could have been used. <clears throat> Same thing with the, uh, I mean, the panel room, when there was a big panel, it was, it was well, you know, I was surprised to see a full panel room um, during some of those panels, but you know, there again, people knew, and I was, it was surprising to me to see that. And we were set up as a club set up in that panel room. And I think we had one of the best spots because we, you know, we were front row and center of that panel room. So when people left, they were walking right in front of us and they had that, we had that big, uh, spin wheel and people were asking about it and we were able to say hey you know we're doing a charity and they they were able to see the the amount of prizes we were giving away and uh, you know i think that did us some good because we between between ic and toylana the georgia alliance raised two thousand dollars for children's health care of atlanta and i think you know that's amazing as you know a little bitty club from georgia we're able to do that uh, yeah and uh so yeah, all in all, it was a cool show. I, you know, there's always ways you can improve, but you know, I, I don't know. I, I you know, it, it's it, the first year in this venue and they're going to learn a lot. Even the guys in the podcast room are like, we're, we're, we don't have a lot of traffic. So I think next year they're going to make some changes and probably push that podcast room up front a little bit more so people could see that. So that's kind of more of the energy of the, the, the show is some of that live kind of talking to some of the, the interviewers and stuff like, I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah, there's, there's a good show. Yeah. I had a lot I, of fun and I look forward to it next year. Yeah. I'm good. I do plan on going again next year. Um, you know, it, it I'm not going to, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but anyway, I, I do plan on going again next year. I do, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get a club table. Hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, be able to get the, uh, the podcast a little bit more. I know we need, yeah. we need to come up with some swag or something as a podcast. Uh, because when yeah. I was talking to them later in the, in the day, uh, cause they had offered us a club ta- a podcast table, but I didn't want to have to man it. Cause you know, we were torn between having to man the, the Georgia table and yeah. the smugglers galaxy table, but there was nobody manning their podcast table. It was just basically, here's my podcast, you yeah. know? Um, so that gives me, you know, we're going to come up with some cool swag for the next year uh as far as the the just show goes and uh yeah I'm, dude it was fun i i enjoy it every year uh i definitely i'm looking forward to next year 22 uh it'll be interesting to see what'll happen with uh celebration and uh because i know he he kind of tries to not do it too close to celebration because people are going to have to choose and they're going to choose celebration over ic right so, yeah, unless you're four nice. hours away then i'll you know yeah but it does, um, you know, I do look, so our Cincinnati goes, Cincinnati's only six hours away from us. Uh, there's a Cincinnati toy show in October 
that uh, my wife and I are talking about making that trip up there for because it's yet again it's another trip that a lot of people make and you're going to meet make some good contacts and see some cool toys but there's a home builder up in Cincinnati that built a home that my wife and I really like and if we have our you know 20 year plan and I don't know if we ever decided to build our own place it'd be this home builder and this home and they have like a, a they call it homorama where they just build like six homes and that's so it's like all the bells and whistles. You just walk from home to home and you see the latest in, in, in interior design and, and trends and building and stuff like that. But that's during that same time. But there was a reason why we can't do it this year. I can't oh, we were supposed to go to Disney at that point. So, uh, so I would, it would be fun to be able to hit that Cincinnati show and then that home builder show. And, but I don't know if I can. I have to go to Disney. Oh, you poor baby. Have to go to Disney again. Oh. Well, hopefully by that time they won't make you wear a mask. Yeah, we'll see what the. I'm 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 okay wearing masks. We'll see yeah. what the the temperatures like. It's I'm not like racing to not wear masks. Gotcha. How did you um feel comfortable wise? What was your comfort at uh, IC? I see. I felt pretty comfortable. People kept their distance. They wore their masks. There wasn't that big of an issue. Like we went downtown for about a half hour Friday night and nobody was wearing masks. It was just like 2018 and it was crowded and packed. There was a main strip down Nashville, but I mentioned this before Nashville and Tennessee in general is just listed as like a pretty safe city for COVID. So it was just weird that that with everyone not wearing masks and it being safe, but yeah, I felt safe in the convention. Yeah. They had bag checks. They had, no one was wearing their masks. People weren't necessarily keeping the social distance, but I was trying to be conscientious of that and keeping my distance. Yeah. I tried giving people room, especially when you were, you know, they're looking at stuff. You don't want to be right on their, you know, right on their back looking at stuff. And, um, I did hear a lot of people were, were commenting that people were given space. That's the one thing I really did like about the old location is there were so it, and even though the, the, the con or the show was well attended, it felt like it was empty because there was just so much room in the, uh, the venue. There was, you know, there was probably 10, 20 feet between in an aisle. So you had just, you know, room for days in that old location versus this one where they still had a lot of room between the aisles, but you know, it did, it did kind of get congested in some places, but, uh, you know, it, I think it was so well, um, uh, uh, spread out, you know, there was the vendors were, were all over the, the good vendors were throughout the hall that it wasn't like Toylana where you had one good vendor or one good star Wars vendor. And he was crammed in a corner where there wasn't a whole lot of room to move around. And, and there was a lot of congestion there. It was, it was a lot yeah. better spread out at IC be interesting to see what happens next year hopefully more people will attend yeah so but Uh, yeah it was fun yeah and uh yeah it was fun it was a good trip make the trip Uh, any toy show is a good toy show man Mm -hmm. so yeah we're right at two hours (laughs) yeah it was a long one but we'll go back to an hour next week yeah next week we're talking vintage kenner pricing um we've been teasing that for a while we're supposed to to do it icc but obviously that didn't we, we didn't get the opportunity to do that so that'll be next week um if you like the show leave us a review next week i'm going to ask if you like our vintage collection talk to tag someone in the facebook post and let them know they should listen but this week leave a review uh, we have a couple of reviews on itunes that i'm just going to read real quick and thank the people for um leaving the reviews because we always appreciate that so hold on let me pull it up real quick where is it oh come on i had you just two seconds ago (laughs) so oh (laughs) david m quinn says glenn and jason present a high quality podcast filled with weekly insights the latest star wars click well thank you i'm not going to read all this (laughs) i just want to thank david quinn i'm going to thank dan's dan sp91 Thanks for the review. And then Cajun Fett, whoever that is, thank you for the review. I have no clue who Cajun Fett is. But thank you for leaving us a review. And if uh, I see any more reviews, I'll thank you on the podcast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, real quick, Jason, uh, give me your website. Forget the website. Go to my YouTube page. Just search J-Dubs, J-A-Y-D-U-B-S. 
I have ICC and I have an ICC toy hunt video up. Um, and that'll just give you the experience of browsing. Like it's just very, it's, it's quiet. I don't do a lot of talking. It's just going up to vendors and kind of recording what they have. So it's almost like window shopping. So check it out. Awesome. You can find me at Cajun Fett at Instagram. <laughs> yes, I did review my own podcast on uh, what's it called? Shameless. iTunes. So find me there. Email us at smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. You can find us, uh, Smugglers Galaxy, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Jason, have a good rest of your day, man. This is the way. This is the way.